how it is a uh, binary hit and just a tiny bit of uh, TDD. Uh, so of course, uh, the focus is still all in Ruby. La. Okay, so, uh, oh. so let me just, okay. Uh, can you all see my new slide? Did it change? Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, so uh, today my talk is about binary heat with TDD. Uh, although I said if I, I wrote it as with TDD, but then actually TDD is just like a small part of it. Okay. So uh, maybe let me introduce myself uh, first for all these people who uh, all the new 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 people that are in this session that I have not met before. Uh, so I'm actually a software engineer working at Shopify uh, in the Singapore office. Uh, I hardly use social media, but I do have a Twitter account. Uh, you can DM me or if you have any questions or you just want to connect, uh, feel free. Uh, and then I my hobby is like long distance running. Uh, so if you are on Strava, uh, you are a runner also, and you're using the running app, you can uh, add me on Strava too. Okay, so uh, actually today's talk, uh, like I said just now, is about both binary heat and uh, and TDD. So uh, actually, the main objective is about learning or revisiting this new this data structure. Some of y'all might already know what is a binary heap. Uh, but then, like for me, I came across it in school, but then I totally forgot about it, like right after school or even before school and then I forgot about it. Then until recently, uh, I got reminded again when somebody mentioned it on Twitter. Then I got curious and uh, like, why not implement it in Ruby? So, and then I realized that it's actually a very good opportunity for me to uh, practice some test-driven test development. So uh, disclaimer is uh, I probably can't go through the entire implementation today, but I'm hoping to reach the point where the tests are written. Uh, so because I, I personally know many people who are familiar with the idea of TDD, but not familiar with actually doing TDD. Uh, so doing TDD, writing tests after the code is actually not really considered because you don't really reap the benefits of uh, of TDD. So hopefully this session uh, ends at a point where uh, I can get a test written and then can pick some pick people's interest in uh, practicing TDD on your own time. So uh, let's go into what is binary heap first. So uh, binary heap is actually a data structure that is commonly used to build priority queues. Uh, it was first introduced by a Welsh Canadian computer scientist called J.W.J. Williams in 1964. And that's like oh, 50, 60 years ago. And then he introduced it actually as a data structure for heap sort. So heap sort is another sorting algorithm. And in terms of time complexity, which is like, uh, every, when we talk about algorithms, we always talk about time complexity, right? And then uh, this part will make a lot more sense later, but I just want to put this up front that like, the insert and extracting elements from the heap, actually the time complexity is big O log N. So what is actually a binary heap? This is a binary heap. It, it is a form of a binary tree but with some rules and constraints. So what are the, I'll be going through the constraints first. Uh, what are the, oh no, rules and constraints is like interchangeable, so, sorry. So I will be going through like some of the rules. So actually there's only two rules to make a binary tree uh, considered a binary heap. So it's a shape property and the heap property. So the shape property actually just means very simply, is you the node should be filled from top to down and left to right. So meaning to say that if we have this uh, tree right now, uh, the next node that is going to be added should be at the uh, under the node 33 because it's top to down, left to right. So it should be node 33. And then the second rule is actually the heat property. 
The heat property uh, means that it requires a consistent order throughout the entire tree, which means either all daughter nodes are less than or equal to the parent node or all daughter nodes be greater or equal to the parent node. So it's a consistent order. And then it's either from the biggest to the smallest or the smallest to the biggest throughout the entire tree. So if we have a parent as the biggest node, which is the top node as the biggest node, then we will call it a max heat. And if we have a small smallest number value at the top node, then we call it a mean heat. So that's it for the rules. And then when it comes to data structure, like a stack, like for example, if we talk about stack, we always, uh, the two main operation is push and pop, right? So there's always some operations you can do on the data structure. So likewise, for binary heap, there's only two main uh, operations also. Uh, of course, there will be like some small ones, but then the two main ones are just inserting and extracting uh, the top node. So how to insert a node in binary tree? So this is where the interesting part is uh, for this data structure. How to insert a node? Uh, so for example, we have a node 45 here. And then when we want to insert, like if you remember just now, I said that there's the shape property. It can only, is from top to bottom and then left to right. So the node has to go under node 36. But then when it goes under node 36, it doesn't uh, fulfill the heat property. So then now we have to consider uh, whether we need to move the node up. So in this case, 45 is bigger than 36 in this max heat, right? So we have to sort the position. And then, and then we do is this recursively and then we will sort the position, check whether it needs to move up again, which in this case actually doesn't because 100 is actually bigger than 45. So then uh, it fulfills the heat property and both the shape, shape property and heat property, then the insert operation is done. So this is the theor theory of like, how to do an insert. And then the next one is how to extract the top node. Uh, so which is in this case is to extract the node 100. So, uh, so in how to do a, a extract for the top node the, of the top node is actually like we take away the top node and then we replace the top node with the last node. And then we do the opposite of the insert. This time around we bubble it down, downwards. So in this case, the D6 can choose to sort place with 55 or 45. Uh, but if we sort with 45, then 45 will be on top of 55, which doesn't fulfill the, the heat property. So in this case, actually we can only sort with the bigger node so as to maintain the heat property. So in this case, we sort with 55 and then we check again. So it's recursive downwards this time around. So 36 can sort with 43 or 33. And if we choose the bigger one, then 36 will sort with 43. And then at this point, the heat property is uh, fulfilled and then the shape property is still there intact. So then the extract operation is done. So in this case, the 100 is successfully extracted uh, from the node. So just to recap what we have gone through about uh, this very simple data structure, called binary heap. So you have two rules. Uh, so it's the shape property, which is inserting nodes from top down, left to right. And then the heap property, which requires a consistent order of nodes uh, or values throughout the tree. Then we have two main operations only, which is the insert a new node and then extract the top node. So this, this, this is like, uh, I would say most of the things you need to know about a binary tree on theory. So in on theory. And then next part is uh, writing tests. So uh, so later we'll be writing just a simple test. But before that, I want to go through uh, like why is writing tests uh, important for me? So personally, I feel uh, the top reason that why I like TDD is because TDD prevents me from yuck shaving. So there's this term called yuck shaving. Uh, I found this definition online, but I know that there's many, many definitions, but this, uh, I found it a bit funny, but although it's a bit crude. So it says that yuck shaving is 
what you are doing when you are doing something stupid, fiddly little task that bears no obvious relationship to what you're supposed to be working on. But yet, a chain of 12 causal relationship links what you are doing to the original meta task. Basically, it just means that uh, you are derailing and you are doing something that doesn't uh, help you in building the feature that you are supposed to build. So uh, TDD, basically, all in all, it helps me focus on building the feature without writing uh, some random code like, and doing some random tasks. And then before we go into uh, uh, writing the code, actually, this is just a tip uh, that actually a binary heap can be easily represented with an array. So you see this array, right? Uh, the index zero is the biggest, the top node, and then zero links to the left node is one, the right node is two, and then node one, left node is three, right node is four. And then for node two, the is left node is five, and then the right node is six. So actually the formula is simple, it's i, two i plus one for the left node, and two i plus two for the right node. So this is just a tip, of course you can, implement represent binary tree however you want uh, in code but then this uh, just a very simple way of representing a binary tree okay uh, so i know uh, so let's write some tests uh, for real uh, i do know that many people say that uh, writing code like in real time on the presentation is uh, disastrous but let me try. Uh, okay, so uh, let me open my editor. Uh, so uh, I actually prepared some uh, some test data. Uh, so for example, uh, we're gonna start with an empty binary heap class, and then we have a initialize. Uh, some seed data if if you if our data structure needs a seed data. So like I say uh, I'm gonna represent the the heap in a uh, using an array. And then of course let's set up our test test environment. So we have a describe binary heap and then let the let the data be the test data be uh, in this case if you see the Binary, this is the, my test data. So if we represent it in code, it will be 55, 36, 43, and 33. And then let's set up a test instance of the binary heap. And then we have data. So uh, simply put, uh, we're gonna only have two main tests uh, in your, of course, when different people, when you are building, really building it, you might choose to write more tests for uh, just to ensure that your, your binary is working as you expected. But then in this case, uh, so, uh, for this insert test, what we really want to do, I also prepared some outcome. So if this is the, the test uh, data right now, if you're gonna insert a node, uh, uh, node 45, so this is the outcome. So after we add the node here and then it bubbles up. So if we do a subject, oh, sorry, I got a, oh no. Oh, <laughs> okay, okay. Oh, well, scary for a moment. Uh, okay, 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 here. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna, wow, I'm gonna end with it then. Okay, okay. Scary, I thought I, got, I was talking for the whole time and nobody heard the editing. Okay, okay. So back to the writing the test, right? So subject insert, which is our binary, we want to insert a 45. And then we can expect, oh, oh okay, before that, Let's add a to array method so that we know we can check on the status of the 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 heap. Okay, so we have to a and then to equal to. In this case, this is our test. The outcome that should happen, right, 
So we have 55, 45, 43, 33, and 36. Okay, so this is our, it can just be a very simple test uh, for our insert method. And then also prepare a, a outcome for, uh, for extract. Okay, so in this case, 100, uh, in this in this data structure that we this heap that we have when we extract, there's actually two things that we should be testing. One is to testing test whether the node is actually the one that we want, and then the other thing to test is actually the outcome. Uh, hey, this is not node, so this is subject. The outcome. Okay, so it should be to equal to this final tree that we have. So it's very important to uh, not test the implementation details, but to test like the outcome. Okay. So in this case, uh, we just need uh, these two tests to uh, to test the two main main features of what a binary hit is. So in this case, I'm gonna add a uh, empty method so that uh, the it doesn't error out. Okay, call this number, and then extract and then these two are empty methods so if i'm gonna run it that's my terminal uh so i if i'm gonna oh wait now let me grab my terminal quick so if we run our uh our test here binary heap then we can see that ig is empty uh basically this is not the outcome that we want and then the node we also didn't extract anything because the methods are empty yeah so uh so if you have been following uh what is the theory right actually in this case we should be adding the adding num to the end of the heap which is the array and then do some bubbling up uh, according to the 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 what is supposed to be the characteristics of the insert operation, and then this one is to pop the first uh, number from the heap or the array, and then swap the place, swap a, eh? swap the position with the last number, and then to bubble the bubble the last number downwards again over the tree okay so uh so i'm not gonna go through the implementation but I, because i think that this is like where the fun part is and this is like the purpose of tdd so like in this case because we have the the test here you can write however what however code that you want here, as long as it pass the test, then I think it's probably fine. You have a working version of binary heat. It might not be the most effective or the most optimized way, but then, but then it fulfills all the requirements of a binary heat. So I do have a solution here. Uh, of course, this, this current version, empty version that we have here, uh, I also have included a, a file for it. And, and then if you are, if you are interested to building it on your own, I will encourage writing more tests for yourself. And then uh, if you are done, you just want to like see my solution, like reference my solution, you can go with, uh, go with the link there. Yep, so, uh, so in this case, I've uh, like just now I mentioned that uh, writing tests helps me keep, focus, keep me focused. So in this case, how does it help me focus is, I just need to pass the test. And that's about it, as long as my test is green. Yeah, so uh, that's all for my talk uh, for today. Uh, I hope that um, uh, if you don't know, or have, if you don't know, or you don't really practice DDD, you will, you will pick your interest in trying out. Uh, I know it might be difficult to, uh, to to do TDD for big, big, very big code base that doesn't have already have tests, uh, or it wasn't written in such a way that uh, is testable. But I will encourage starting from small, uh, small data structures or small things like like just implementing a binary heap. Then you can really bring out the 
uh, uh, how the flow of how DDD, DDD helps with programming. Yeah, uh, so that's all for my talk for today. Uh, feedbacks are welcome. Any channels you hear or on the Slack group or on GitHub issue is fine. So uh, that's it. Okay, so let's go back. Oh, shit.